On today's episode of Survival Dispatch Academy, we're evaluating four takedown bows that break down and fit in your backpack. I'm Chris Heaven, and I'm the CEO of Survival Dispatch. Up until a year ago, I hadn't done anything archery related since I was a Boy Scout. I took an interest in takedown bows because I felt they were a viable option for a compact and quiet hunting tool that fits in a backpack. However, I quickly realized that archery was going to be a challenge for me for a number of reasons. For starters, I have a prosthetic left eye, so I have zero depth perception. On top of that, I've had a significant number of serious injuries from multiple wrecks as well as years of competing on our national powerlifting team. This short clip is how I spent many decades training. That's a 645 pound gym lift at 181 pounds body weight. During my career, I competed at 181, 198, 220, 242, and 275 pounds. I've undergone 32 surgeries under general anesthesia and countless day procedures that should have been under anesthesia. To say my body is high mileage would be an understatement. When I started down the archery path, I had trouble hitting a four foot by four foot target at 75 feet. Here we are a year later, and I can consistently put every arrow inside an 18 inch target at 75 feet because I'm stubborn and I've incorporated archery into my run and gun training that I do five times a week. I've experimented with multiple arrow rest sights and pretty much every archery accessory you can imagine. Before the purists critique my form, be aware that I frequently have to come up with unconventional ways to compensate for the physical problems I've mentioned. Every joint in my body is riddled with arthritis. I have no regrets and I'm not complaining, but I would highly suggest that you do not adopt the strategies I use unless you're physically beat up like I am. The day this footage was shot, it was raining off and on with wind gusts in excess of 25 miles per hour. All things considered, I felt my accuracy was okay. The first bow we're looking at is the Survival Archery Systems Recon Folding Survival Bow that sells for $219.95. It's made in the US out of T6 aluminum and folds down to 24 inches. The bow weighs 2.4 pounds when strung. The Recon has a smaller brother named the Tactical Survival Bow that folds down to 21 inches and only weighs 2.2 pounds. In order to achieve the shorter length, one of the limbs has to be reversed before stringing the bow. The Tactical model is also made out of T6 aluminum here in the U.S. and sells for $199.95. Both of these folding bows can store up to three takedown arrows in the riser. You can order either model with 40, 45, 50, or 55 pound limbs. The recon shown in this video has 50 pound limbs and uses a 62 inch string. The recon and tactical bows are both rated at 200 plus feet per second, but we cannot confirm that number. We have a Doppler radar chronograph on its way to us and we'll be revisiting all of the bows in this video to determine what their FPS number is with various different types of arrows. In this short clip, you can clearly hear the reverb when shooting this bow. It does not come with a mounting hole for a bow stabilizer. If this was my go-to bow, I would drill and tap it to accept a bow stabilizer like the one shown in the corner of the screen. This survival dispatch video is brought to you by Nutrient Survival. Nourish your body, power your mind. The next two bows that we're looking at are the three-piece Survival Archery Systems Ranger and its little brother, the Scout. Both of them are made out of T6 aluminum here in the U.S. The Ranger and Scout both sell for $199.95. Both bows accept limbs in a pocket on each end of the riser. The Ranger has a larger riser which can hold three takedown arrows. The Scout does not have room in the riser for arrows. 
Even though the Ranger has a larger riser, the material isn't as thick and the bow only weighs 2.6 pounds when strung. The Scout, on the other hand, weighs 2.8 pounds when strung. Either bow can be ordered with 40, 45, 50, or 55 pound limbs that are made of a composite material. The Ranger in this video is equipped with 50 pound limbs, while the Scout in this video has 40 pound limbs. I've shot thousands of arrows with the Scout, mostly with 50 pound limbs. I set it up at 40 pounds for this video, so there's a notable difference between it and the Ranger. Personally, I can't tell the difference between 40 pound and 45 pound limbs. However, going from 40 pound limbs to 50 pound limbs is quite noticeable. I included slow motion video of the Ranger since I elected to shoot off the riser ledge with no arrow rest. I wanted it to be obvious to people how this negatively impacts the flight of the arrows. Without an arrow rest, the veins contact the riser, which results in erratic flight. Many people recommend shooting off the riser ledge. I am not one of those people, as I've had nothing but crappy performance when doing so. The Scout is set up with a magnetic arrow rest that easily folds out of the way when contacted by an arrow vein. It's a cheap but effective arrow rest that I much prefer over the rubber adhesive rests. As you can see, I also have a simple optic on the Scout, which allows me to shoot very consistently with this bow. I will be drilling and tapping the Scout riser to accept a bow stabilizer, but to be honest, it does not have a lot of reverb. The final bow that we're looking at is the Survival Archery Systems flagship model, the Atmos. It retails for $499.95 and rivals recurve bows twice its price. That's based on my first-hand experience using different bows over the course of the past year. The Atmos riser is machined out of 6061 T6 aluminum here in the U.S. and is available in burnt bronze or cobalt Cerakote. It weighs 2.6 pounds when fully assembled and strung. This is a 60 inch bow that fits in a 22 inch backpack with the composite limbs removed. They quickly attach and detach with an Allen key bolt and washer. The limbs for the Atmos are 100% compatible with the ones for the Ranger and the Scout. From a purely subjective perspective, the Atmos fits my hands like a glove. It's ultra comfortable to shoot. SAS advised that you can shoot without an arrow rest and just a piece of felt on the riser ledge. Again, I do not personally recommend doing so. When you shoot off the ledge, the veins, aka fletching, contact the riser, which results in erratic flight. I've experimented with countless arrow rests over the past year. As I mentioned, I like the collapsible magnetic arrow rest, which is the style I have on my Scout. However, I found with the Atmos that a two-prong spring-loaded adjustable arrow rest delivered the most consistent performance. Higher quality arrows come pre-indexed where the vein that's a different color than the other two is lined up with the knock. Cheaper practice arrows do not come indexed. It's important to index your arrows so you can quickly and easily place arrows consistently with the odd colored vein facing down. When using an arrow rest like I have on the Atmos, none of the veins contact the arrow rest or riser, which delivers super consistent results. As you can see in the video, I also have an optic similar to the one I have on the Scout. However, the one on the Atmos is a few steps up in quality. It provides both audible and tactile feedback as it clicks from one position to the next when adjusting elevation or windage. That makes it super easy to adjust on the fly without having to put an eye on the graduated hash marks on the optic. It's worth mentioning that we were sent takedown bows from another company that has great reviews on Amazon, but they did not perform well. Three times we sent them back to the company as we could not stand behind their products. We're not in the business of hurting other businesses, so we're not mentioning their name. Suffice it to say, the SAS bows have performed well across the board, with the exception of the very notable reverb from the recon folding bow. With that being said, the reverb could probably be reduced by adding a bow stabilizer. The top three reasons I personally recommend SAS bows are number one, made in the US. Number two, super responsive customer service. Number three, consistently good build quality. With regards to the clip that's currently playing, from left to right, the bows are one, the Ranger, two, the Scout, 
three, the Recon, and four, the Atmos. A few accessories are shown that we tried over the past year with the SAS bows. There are a couple arrow rests with whiskers that I do not recommend for anything but fishing arrows with no veins. The two-prong spring-loaded adjustable arrow rest that I have on the Atmos and a true glow sight that's really decent but didn't work so well with my lack of depth perception are also shown. There are multiple links below in the description, including a code and a link to get 10% off SAS products. Full disclosure, we were sent the bows free of charge but weren't paid to produce this video. We also have no affiliate relationship with SAS and receive no commissions from any sales. Thank you for following our channel. Stay strapped, stay vigilant, stay frosty. Become a Survival Dispatch Insider. We bring together survival enthusiasts and preppers to share knowledge and skills, which means you can enhance your preparedness for emergencies and ensure the safety of your community. The results you'll get improve your emergency preparedness by learning skills and strategies from experienced preppers. Build lasting connections with like-minded individuals to share your passion for safety and readiness. Access a wealth of knowledge and resources to assist you in protecting you and your community in certain situations. Go to survivaldispatch.com to get started.